coins. They are responsible for some of the most insane shit in Ultra Kill, like comboing enough damage to one-shot a boss. Oh my god, bro. And leaving anyone watching to wonder what the fuck just happened. Machine, my dad just grounded me. What you just saw was a clip from the world record run of level 3-2 in the any percent category. So yeah, it's it's definitely natural to be confused by it, considering the very technical process that was executed in about nine seconds. I will break you off and be LTB this. What? But why is that clip important? How does it even relate to the challenge I'm doing? Well, if you watch closely, you probably noticed that this player utilized a mechanic known as coin punching. In short, it's a really cool but kind of difficult way of dealing damage. And they also use what's called dead coining, but that's a pretty complex mechanic that I'm not going to explain in this video. I mean, it's relevant anyway, because we're not going to be doing any of that. No. Today, I present to you a never-before-seen Ultra Kill challenge that will surely drive anyone who attempts it to insanity. Before we can start though, you kind of need to know the rules, so let's go over those. For starters, completion of the entire game is not required. Only levels that contain at least one boss enemy need to be beaten, secret bosses included. What makes this challenging is your very limited firepower. You're only allowed to defeat most bosses with only coin punches, with the exception of Leviathan and Cancerous Rodent, more on them later. Any accidental damage not stemming from a coin requires you to completely restart the level. This includes parrying, ground slamming, directly punching, shooting, and any other kind of non-coin punch damage that comes directly from you. Just to clarify, yes, chargebacks are still legal. As for enemies other than the bosses, you aren't limited in how you can kill them, meaning you can utilize more than just coin punching, but you are limited in what you're allowed to carry throughout the run. So here's a list of those legal weapons. The Marksman Revolver, for the coins, obviously. The Feedbacker Arm, for punching those coins. The Knuckle Blaster Arm, for breaking through glass and weak walls. And the Whiplash, for coin juggling. So just the Marksman and the first three arms are the only things you're allowed to have equipped. Oh, and last but definitely not least, you are required to P-rank every level you complete throughout this run. Spare change percent is not achieved until you do. And just to cover a technicality, some levels containing a secret boss can normally be P-ranked without defeating the boss. But in this challenge, it is required that you do, or the run is invalid. An example of this is the mysterious Druid Knight in level 4-3. The level can be P-ranked without defeating him, but you must for this challenge since he's the only boss enemy in the level. The same goes for any levels that have no required bosses but do have secret ones. If you're at all confused about any of the rules I just mentioned, there's a static post outlining the challenge criteria in my community discord, which is linked in the description. Otherwise, here we go. A lot like my last challenge, the beginning was a lot harder than it should have been because I hadn't fully tested the waters of the challenge yet. And by that I mean I hadn't even come up with the rules or how I was going to go about the levels that don't just have a boss. Which are most levels in this challenge. Initially I planned on beating the entirety of a level with coins only, not just the boss. But during my first stream, after taking way too long to beat the first level, Chad and I decided that it would be better to just beat the level normally and then limit firepower for the boss only. I actually did find a video of someone P-ranking 0-1 with coin punching only, but as much as I would love to say that would work for every other level, it probably won't, considering just how limited the number of coins you get is. Nonetheless, like a couple of tries after I started using all my weapons to get through the main part of the level, I P-ranked it because, you know, it's literally just a malicious face. I mean, I missed a couple of uh, chargebacks and died once, but I, I beat it. There there's not much to see.
I actually skipped over this level during the first stream because I forgot this encounter was even a thing. I had to watch this really old video from like 2020 that showed the game in early development and this encounter just happened to be in that video. I kind of felt nostalgic too because once I saw it, I remembered having to go through it a long time ago when I first started the game. I even had to question if the secret area was even still there. But once I got there, I quickly realized that this fight would be a little tough because of how small the room was. For how mobile swords machines are, it was really tight. And I always felt like I was just barely able to avoid activating its attacks or accidentally punching it. Still doing this? I actually never did this one. I forgot this swords machine fight was here. Gotta get warmed up again. This room is really small for this attempt three. Ah, lost that coin. Almost half. No, I picked up the gun! Oh my god. So yeah, the strat here was literally just to jump up really high over and over again because it was a lot easier to avoid damage that way. And I had actually already used this same strategy in my first stream when I attempted 0-5, which is the level with the two Cerberus guys. The only problem with it was that if I accidentally slammed in the wrong spot, I would do damage, and that's against the rules. This exact problem actually caused me to reset quite a few times. Oh, I, f I slammed him. Wait, did I just... I just slammed him, I think. Fuck. After some failed attempts, I finally had a run that was looking promising. That was until I checked the timer. Ah. Uh, what is the time score I need on this? Two minutes. Bruh. This is hard. Clearly the strategy I was using wasn't going to cut it. I just couldn't kill the swords machine fast enough with how slow my coins would generate. So something had to change. What I started doing was stacking up damage on a coin just before the fight trigger, as well as chaining more coins off of the swords machine once I had thrown them, instead of waiting for my gun to refill. This new strategy would eventually prove successful, but just barely. Also, I want to mention this room with the piston in the middle. I swear to god, the number of runs I lost to this piston because I always forgot it was there was way more than the number of times I lost to the swords machine by far. This shit is just placed in such an annoying way for speedrunners because it's so easy to forget where it is. And if you do barge into the room at top speed because you forgot, there's no time to react. It's just instant death every time. Oh my god. Anyway, here's the run. No way. No way! Let's go. There it is. GG! Finally, that took like, what, 40 minutes? You see, I laughed, but that wasn't a lie. It took me almost an hour to beat a swords machine, albeit a beefed up one. Just goes to show you how hard this challenge really is.
Okay, so I have something to admit. I messed up during this next run. On the attempt that I got my P rank, uh, I did this. Damn it. Did you see it? On the left side of the door frame, barely visible on camera. Yeah, I slam him. Yeah, I bite him. Somehow, neither I or anyone in my chat caught it. So, I'm gonna do a whole new recording right now of me getting the P rank. There it is. Too easy. There seems to be a common theme for the prelude levels, and that was how quickly you had to beat them to get an S in time. Most of them required you to reach the goal in just over two minutes with the longest time requirement being 3 minutes and 30 seconds. This level, however, was tied with one other for having the second shortest s rank time requirement out of every other level in the game. Two minutes. I had only two minutes to beat these big menacing rocks. And if you're curious, the level that takes first place for shortest time is 6-2, the second Gabriel fight. Machine, I'm going to post cringe in general! This was the first level that Chad and I started to worry over if it was even possible, because it wasn't just the time that was a problem, it was the style too. Chad did some calculations to see just how many hits I could get off and how much style would come with each coin punch, and we did find out that with those basic numbers it wasn't possible, or at least it didn't seem possible. But you see, that was the problem. Our calculations were just too basic. There were a couple of key things that we weren't factoring in. In Ultra Kill, you're always receiving some kind of multiplier on the style points you earn, whether it be adding to or taking away from those points. You see that yellow bar underneath the style meter? That's the fresh weapon meter. Since I didn't have more than one weapon, my marksman would never go stale. The way weapon freshness works is, if you have multiple guns, each time you fire one, it becomes increasingly stale. This was important because it means that the 50 style I would receive from each fistful of dollar would instead be 75, and it would never go down because I only had one gun. On top of that, there's also an additional 1.5 times style bonus anytime you're fighting a boss. So in total, that would give me a 2.25 times style bonus, which comes out to a nice 112 points for each fistful of dollar. This fight was still gonna be far from easy though, because I still had to beat the level in under two minutes. Chad and I came to the final conclusion that if I took little to no damage, I would be able to get the P rank quick enough with enough style, this is why I started using that strategy where I just jump really high over and over because I needed to avoid so many attacks from these guys, most of which can't hit me when I'm in the air. Might have to just settle with beating it. I just parried his thing. That was, I would never do that again, but I tried. Thus, I began the hunt for the perfect run. I just slammed him. I think it's possible unless you chain coins now. Found out that a coin takes four seconds, 60 punches. Well, I already did it. I just was really slow about it. I definitely could have gotten it. I was really, I, I, I literally lost time getting to the door. I'm sure I can do it. Missing too many coins, man. Yeah, I made a video where I was doing this. Was it this exactly? <laughs> Yeah, that was me. I was trying to figure out a way to get a double coin juggle so I could do a lot of damage opening on the fight with the flesh prison, but sadly it probably takes too much time for juggling two coins. Yeah, I really was messing around with it. Man, these loading coins is killing my style.
There we go, there we go, there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me through! Holy shit, please. Oh my god, just barely! Let's go! Mission accomplished. So we've reached the first exception. 1-2 is a very special level. Within it, we'll find a little green friend. And also a bigger, not so friendly friend. Because of the way the rules are written, I'm afraid this level is impossible to complete without making an exception. You see, the goal is to beat anything with a health bar using only coin punches. But our little friend here cannot be hit by coin punches. There is a way to kill it by using the level's environment, but this thing moves so damn slow that it isn't possible to pull that off in time. I'm sorry, but we must use the gun. No! Did I skip the kids versus rodents? I did. I did, didn't I? I can do that real quick. This is all your fault, Pyros. I mean, street cleaners. Not the guy from TF2. Grabbing this. Gonna need it for the cancerous rodent fight, man. Okay. It had to be done. Those are some annoying orbs. What the hell? Well, he's killing himself, lol. Yeah, that was easy. It'd be so funny if it was three minutes. Is it three minutes? One, two. No, it's four minutes and forty seconds. I, I beat it by a lot. I thought I thought it, I had another like half a second victory there. Easy as that level was, we took an L on Cancerous Rodent because we had to shoot a gun. But we shall march on to the next. Okay, even though I'm about to make a joke, I'm being totally serious when I say this level gave me a very good run for my money. During my first stream, I attempted this level and beat it within the first few tries, but that run is pretty much invalid because it was before I remembered the swords machines existed in this level as well. Now, technically the swords machines could have been considered optional since they are secret bosses and it had not yet been proven that the level could be P-ranked with their fight included. But one, they die very quickly to coins. Two, the level gives you like eight minutes to beat everything, which seems like way more than enough time. Three, the hideous mass fight is a joke. It's way too easy to be considered a challenge. And four, I literally made this challenge, so of course it wasn't yet proven that the swords machines could be included in a P-rank run of the level. But hey, I'm not complaining, I'm really happy to be the one who got to try it out. Oh, and funny thing, I got so engrossed in this fight that I stopped reading chat for a really long period and didn't notice them trying to tell me multiple, multiple times that I should just practice the swords machines fight until, like, way into the stream. Taking the checkpoint and practicing the fight a bunch, I guess.
click, click, click through to the system and bust it in your trophy. Hey, what the hell is with this goofy ass music, you bitch? I mean, I don't see a problem. <laughs> Your level was not hard. I didn't have to get serious at all, so why not have a less than serious song? You motherfucker. I gotta, I gotta do another one, man. First try V2. Too good, man. There's another one. Consider that V2 fight the calm before the storm, because little did I know I was about to feel the violent rumble of thunder all around me. Not just this level, but P1 too, since it was next. These two levels back to back intimidated me so much that during the streams I straight up skipped P1 and didn't try it again until it was the very last level I needed to complete. I'll still be showing it next though. Anyway, 2-4 was the very first level that really did seem impossible after some time. When I first attempted it, I didn't really have the fight's mechanics in mind because I more or less forgore them, and I hadn't looked at what the P rank requirements were, so I kind of just went through this level being completely unaware of how hard it would be. The first issue I came across was HAND. I wasn't really thinking about Minos' hand the way I should have been. I was treating it as a boss enemy and doing the whole coin punching only thing, but you'll notice that there isn't a health bar anywhere on the screen while you're fighting it. So it is completely within the rule set to treat it as a normal enemy. Someone in chat was smart enough to point this out to me eventually, and to them I owe a huge thank you, because I wouldn't have thought of that nearly as quickly as they did, because I always got so locked into what I was doing. Technically this isn't a boss, the hand isn't a boss. Wait, you're right, it doesn't have a health bar. You're right. As you could have guessed, I took this fact and ran with it, and I ran far. From that point, I started using everything I could to get past the hand as quickly as possible every single run. But sadly, the hand wasn't the only obstacle I would have to overcome. Up until this point, the bosses had all been relatively manageable through either having low health or having allowed me to at least chain coin punches off of them. But this fight would be... different. Corpse Minos had quite a bit of health to take out with no good way for me to chain coin punches off of him. While it is possible, it's just too much of a headache with how much room it leaves for mistakes like accidentally punching and parrying his hands or whiplashing them because you were trying to juggle the coins. He also just generally moves a lot when he throws punches, making it harder to chain those coins sometimes, not to mention that he can also knock you away from the coin you were just trying to chain. And also that annoying ass purple orb is in there causing chaos as well. So I couldn't be bothered to do it like that unless it was the absolute last option. In order to even beat him in time, I would need to do more damage than just the base two points that come from a normal coin punch. I tried a few different things like juggling coins at the beginning and juggling off of different surfaces mid-fight, but I just I couldn't get anything to work. Nothing was working. Maybe this really was just impossible through the rule set's normal means.
but no. I had this feeling that I just hadn't done everything I could. There had to be something. I just needed to think. I need to make better use of each coin. A way to stack damage on him. He's just got too much health. I don't think a coin general at the beginning is going to be enough. Either. I wish I could chain coins off of him, but he just goes so far back there. Coins are line of sight, so anywhere in this arena, the coins can't see me anymore. But where can I... wait, when he leans back there, I should be able to... Yeah, yeah, that's it! I've got it! There it was, sat there staring me in the face the whole time. My ticket to victory. The front wall would allow me to do maximum damage with each coin I tossed, because I had the opportunity to juggle each time Corpse Minos threw his arm back for a punch. This works because the coins are line of sight, and Corpse Minos' head goes so far back that they can no longer see him, and they don't target his hands because they are in a weak spot. It was a surefire way to beat this fight as quickly as possible, and with the highest damage output possible. There was no way it could fail. So I pushed on, trying mercilessly to prove that this was indeed possible. I can beat you with a coin. You can't beat me with a coin. Damn, that's the fastest I've ever done that. Hey, okay, 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 we got him, got him, got him. Go, 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 go. Let's go! There it is! God, even just watching that back while editing, I get super tense because of just how close that was. It wasn't as close as my time in 05, but it was definitely up there. But get ready, because it's time for the first Prime Sanctum. The crimes thy kind have committed against humanity are not forgotten. I didn't do nothing to you. 
you just mean because you're British. If you've seen that video I made called wall double coin juggling, which I showed earlier during the 0-5 section, then you'll finally know the context behind it. I got a lot of comments on that video saying that it was cool and all, but there were better ways to do damage. I knew that, of course, because I didn't just make that video for the fun of it. No. I made that video in preparation for this challenge. I was so concerned about finding a way to beat P1, or Flesh Prison specifically, that I tried to come up with several different ways to theoretically do so. The coin juggling thing was only one of them. I don't know if I am the first to have discovered that tech, but it was cool that I figured it out on my own. Sad thing is though, it never even got used, along with the mountain of other ideas me and a couple people in my Discord came up with, like trying to use the Maurice heads to friendly fire at Flesh Prison and the eyes surrounding it with the explosion they would cause, or using the Maurice's charge blasts to get a charge back explosion at the perfect position and moment that would send the blue orbs back at FP when it fired them. I can't even stress to you how ridiculously hard that second idea is to pull off, by the way. It's absolutely insane. Quite ironically, however, the solution to this fight wasn't one that required much effort at all. But before I realized that, I had gotten so lost as to what I should do to win that I actually sat there for a minute on stream stuck in my own head, wondering how I could even salvage the idea of this level being at all possible. I tell you, man, it's always fucking Flesh Prison that gives me problems in these challenge runs. But let me show you the exact moments that I figured out how to beat this level. Damage. I think I might have just found a way to kill it. Oh, if only you knew how right you were past me. Oh, and apologies for how low the quality is. Uh, YouTube isn't very generous when it comes to downloading my own VODs from the site. And I'm kind of new to the whole streaming thing, so I don't really know how to make it super crisp yet, lol. Anyway, if you didn't catch what happened, there was a very unique interaction that took place. So Flesh Prison summons these little minions around it, right? And two to three of them can be smaller versions of malicious faces, otherwise known as Maurice's. These Maurice's can only shoot charged beams. So what I did was I ran in circles underneath the flesh prison when it started to shoot its blue orbs because this would attract both the orbs and the Maurice beams to a spot where their explosions would cause the blue orbs to misfire back at the flesh prison resulting in absolutely incredible amounts of damage. This completely cleared up the issue of not knowing how to quickly beat Flesh Prison, and I was ecstatic when I found this shortcut. For the second challenge in a row now, I was the happiest I ever got during the entire challenge run when I arrived at Minos Prime. All I had to do was punch a few coins at him and avoid his attacks. There was no special strats or anything like there was for Flesh Prison. Here's the full run of Prime Sanctum 1 in its full glory. This fight is a uh, shitstorm. Ugh. 
god, bro. We did it! How much time did I have left to spare? And look at the style! Look at the fucking style! I didn't do anything! Let me, let me exit the level first. Let me get the actual P rank. Yeah. <laughs> All we had to do was stare at it from underneath. Yes! As you can see, Chad and I were pretty psyched that I had achieved such a great feat. Now some of that hype might have just been the fact that I had just completed the entire challenge run since I saved P1 for dead last during the actual streams but I can guarantee that most of it was from beating the level. Unless you watch the streams, you have no idea of the mental gymnastics I had to go through to get this P rank. Now, it may be much easier for all of you now since you just saw how I did it, but imagine starting off with barely any knowledge of how you would eventually beat this level. Oh, I'm just so glad it's over. Ah, good to see you, Gabriel. I could really use a couple of no-brainer levels right now. What? Whoa, man, it, it was just a prank. The insignificant fuck! Oh shit, now I've done it. Allow me to calm him down. Who's next? What we got? Gabriel. Oh shit. I'll give it a try. Or you will be crossing the- your choice is made. Once more. No. Oh, that was a really good first attempt. Damn. I think this is going to be one of those fights where I can't be messing with uh, multiple coin juggles. Because I need to get individual hits to get enough style. Whoa, come on. What do I need, 2,000 style to beat this guy? Am I? Got a whole bunch of spare change that says otherwise. I guess I am. That's rude. Give me that blood. Oh, he throws it right at you? <gasps> Players of this palace are not for your kind. Go! Says the one with no money. Okay, now we ball. Foolishness. Yeah, you're right. I just missed a coin. I'm an idiot. One more, one more. Ah! Don't tell me it's two minutes. Doesn't matter. Got it anyway. Gabriel can bet his ass my woohoos were many. It's woes, asshole. Erm, um, actually. God, this is not over! Well, I mean, he's not wrong.
I did it, guys. I beat him with coins. That's a damn lie, and you know it! So, yeah, that's about it. Three, two, one. Look at this silly goober of a man. He's so silly. It is great. I'm afraid I cannot do him justice with an introduction, for he is as mysterious as he is silly. So, let us begin. Maybe cheese. Maybe cringe. But it's a part of the game, yo. I know I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I didn't realize the insurrectionist was like, actually God. Are you all dead in here? I think so. Yes, I will be fighting the druid. Is the door open? No, I have to do this one. Oh, there we go. Full auto. Damn. Give me my health back. Stop! Yeah, let's do one at a time this time. Huh? Did another one get lit somehow? There were zero. Oh. <laughs> Is it the owl talking too? <laughs> Just fucking hit him. I hate that attack a lot. Allow me to introduce you to a pre-completion rule set loophole that ended up becoming a rule itself because it was actually pretty important. So the rules said this at the time of streaming this fight. If there is no boss health bar on screen, any methods of damaging all enemies with the allowed equips are eligible. But the moment a boss health bar appears, the only allowed means of the player themselves damaging the boss or bosses are fistful of dollar and chargeback, as well as whatever results from the chargeback, like explosions. The boss can also be damaged by friendly fire, but only if it was caused by a fellow enemy or itself. Earlier in the video, I did clarify that no kind of parry damage is allowed against the boss in a boss fight, but that only goes for damage. When you parry something, you get health and style, as well as the damage on the boss. But if it's a projectile that you parry, you could aim it away from the boss so it never hits them, leaving only the health and style benefits without breaking the rules. It's perfectly fair to do this because all you have to do is beat the boss with coin punches, and this loophole is not a way that directly helps you in damaging the boss. It just allows you to get your style up and stay in the fight a little longer. With all that said, it's time to get serious and beat this shit. Three, two, one.
<laughs> so bad. I, I, I'm stupid for forgetting my own rules because that made it so much easier. Hey, hey uh, speaking of easier, you guys think that uh, V2 is still mad at me? Why don't you come find out? Oh shit. Okay, no, I'm not making another joke. The badass music, the intimidating edits, none of it's for a giggle. V2 is actually quite the formidable opponent in this level, and for one very specific reason. You know how this whole challenge is about punching coins? Yeah, well, uh, V2 can shoot my coins, which is bad, <laughs> very bad. So you know what that means, this shit gonna be tough. I forget that it shoots my coins. Oh, that's not good. Damn. God, the timing on that is weird. I have a Dion style though. How the hell am I supposed to do it? Oh wait. Just like that. V3. I don't think there is a V3. Sadly. Now I just gotta kill the other enemies. There we go. I did not just die there. Before I show you the final run, I just want to give everyone who's trying this challenge a tip for this level. So, V2 can shoot your coins, but when it's enraged, it can't. And the way you enrage it is by staying as far away as possible, because for some reason that makes V2 angry. But when it's angry, it won't shoot your coins, so you have free reign to do whatever the hell you want during that time. Okay, on to the final run.
That's good. That's good. You stop that. Stop it. There we go. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay I'm not going to I'm not going to be dumb this time. I'm not going to be dumb. There we go. Okay, I don't know why I was concerned about style at all. Almost 5,000? Okay. Jesus. That was like double. Okay. Now I know what you're thinking. And no, I didn't skip the ferryman. But you'll be glad to know that I did toss some coins in his direction. I have good news, and I have bad news. The bad news is that I have to make one last exception for this next level. But the good news is that I get to make use of one of the coolest strategies I've come up with so far. So here's the strategy, ladies and gents. The timer is very tight in this level, so you gotta get up to the surface as fast as possible via a super jump off the left wall when you get to the level entry door. As soon as you break out of the water, you want to look left and do a ground pound followed by an immediate slide jump to get to the dock. Try and aim for the middle area of the dock with your jump, because this will activate the fight pretty much as soon as you get out there and also put you in a good position for what you've got to do next. While you're flying through the air, you should look down and also in the opposite direction of which Leviathan will spawn, so you will be ready to punch a coin off of the ground. And when you reach that middle point of the dock, go ahead and ground slam into a regular jump to quickly stop moving horizontally. Right as you're about to hit the peak of your jump, throw a coin, wait a moment, then follow this pattern. After you've punched the coin three times, you can instead start to whiplash it into the air to keep it from immediately hitting Leviathan once he appears. You don't want to hit him with the coin immediately because it would be nearly impossible to chain the coin off of him from his initial spawn position. Instead, you've got to wait until after he lunges at you. Now he won't always immediately lunge at you when you start the fight, so in that case you'll need to continue to whiplash the coin to keep it in the air while you wait. The best way to know if he's going to lunge or not is by sound cues. If you were to try and look at him to figure it out, you'd most likely lose the coin straight away and that would suck. So listen for the unique sound cues instead. If you hear the barrage sound cue, that's when you'll have to continuously walk in circles around the coin while you whiplash it. But be careful, because you don't want to accidentally hook Leviathan or these damn green orbs. I know I just said quite a lot, 
but all of these actions happen in quick succession, so I can show you a couple clips of what the execution should exactly look like for both scenarios. Now you probably noticed that I was also punching coins at Leviathan while juggling the first coin I set up, and yes, that is also something you have to do. I can't really explain to you how to do that, it just takes a lot of practice. In fact, the clips I just showed you were a more concise version of the strategy that I didn't actually use in my own run, so you're welcome. The runs you saw were both a perfect example of the strategy for either way Leviathan acts at the beginning of the fight. The movements, the positioning, all of it. Oh yeah, and I move towards the middle of the dock while juggling so that when Leviathan does eventually lunge, I can still get to my coin. If you position yourself in a bad spot, Leviathan will just prevent you from getting to it, and having to restart the level every time that happens really sucks. So don't make the same mistakes I did. Once that behemoth of a beginning section is over, all you have to do is continuously punch coins at Leviathan while occasionally saving at least one coin for every time he lunges so that you can get an extra point of chained damage like in the beginning each time. But wait, what about the exception? Well, it's nothing huge. The reason we had to make one in the first place is because while Chad and I were strategizing over this fight, we came to the definitive conclusion that it is impossible to get enough style by only coin punching just because of how much damage is necessary to kill Leviathan. You just can't both do enough damage and rack up enough style in time. So here's the solution, and only once are you allowed to do this. When Leviathan shoots his barrage, you are allowed a single parry that results in damaging him. And it's specifically this, because if you get lucky enough, your parry will backfire multiple orbs at once and get you a lot of style from plus friendly okay. fire. That is all for the strategy. Now on to my actual run. Balls, man. Stop throwing your balls at me in such a random order. Why can't you be like Maurice, who is coordinated and not dumb in any way? Okay. No! Oh, oh, my style is already 5,000! What the fuck? I just have to beat him now! Go! Go! <laughs> the difference that makes! What the hell? Maybe it's because I got so many more friendly fires, I don't know. Ah! Come on, time, be, be nice to me. This is it, this is it. I'm just gonna sit here and like, dude, 
the pair that rule like completely changed the game <laughs> like it doesn't feel as good but it's probably also because i've gotten used to the crazy shit that i'm doing so it doesn't feel as crazy anymore yeah the source machine. Oh, thanks, Virtue. You're stupid! Ah! Yes, do that, do that, do that, do that every time. Ooh, ah. <sighs> you know what? I'm, I don't need these, these bosses to P-rank the level, so I'm just gonna try and do the hideous masses first. Actually, you know what? Let me read the rules real quick. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a technicality that I can do. Must P-rank all levels that contain at least one boss enemy or an enemy with a visible health bar. Doesn't say anything about having to kill all of the bosses. <laughs> I just listed what bosses were in the level. So technically, I didn't even have to beat the swords machines, but I knew that one would be possible, kind of. This one is just really, really, really hard. Might be lame. But, might otherwise be impossible, so, so I think it might be a little fair. <laughs> Wait, there's cheese right here. None of those hit what I wanted them to. There we go. Boom. If any of you can figure out a good way to beat the dual insurrectionists in this level, I'd love to know. I just didn't really have the time to figure it out myself, but I'd love to revisit this in the future if it becomes possible. Now, where were we? Let's settle this! Oh, right. After doing this fight, I could really tell that Gabe was angry with me for giving him the erm um, actually treatment earlier in the run. Not only that, but this was the number one hardest level to get an S in time on, with it being only a minute 50. So you can probably imagine how much trouble I had with this. Psych! Oh, let's go! I did it! Yeah, no, I beat this fight kind of astonishingly fast. It only took me about nine minutes from when I entered the level for the first time to beat him. I mean, I'll still show you the fight though, because it was pretty fun. I actually beat this level so quickly and easily that it surprised the one chat member I had that was doing like actual calculations for the levels. Good stuff. But sadly, the easy times were over. All that was left now was composed of purely the opposite. 
The second Prime Sanctum was the hardest challenge I faced. So hard, in fact, that it took three streams to beat it, with one of those full streams being purely dedicated to practicing. But without further ado, let its reckoning commence. In any game you play, harder levels in challenges usually come with the coolest and most complex strategies, and P2 was no different. If you thought the Leviathan strats were crazy, then just wait till you see what Chat and I cooked up for this level. Shit's about to get so crazy that even the fabric of Ultra Kill's reality isn't safe. Now allow me to explain what I mean by that. So P-ranking P2 within the 10 minutes you're given isn't super tough for players who are using all the weapons they have available. But since we're using only a limited arsenal, especially against Sisyphus, we're gonna need all the time we can get. So, Chad and I devised a rather clever plan to kill Sisyphus first and then backtrack to the beginning of the level to do the rest of it. Why would I want to kill Sisyphus first, you ask? Well, there's this funny little thing called the timer. And when you kill Sisyphus, the game thinks you've already beaten the rest of the level, so it just goes ahead and freezes that little timer for you. Now, normally it would be impossible to go back and do the rest of the level because there's no way to get out of the arena once you touch the floor, but I wasn't going to be fighting Mr. Sissy in the arena. No. Instead, each run I would perform a maneuver that would allow me to get out of bounds and fight Sisyphus on the roof of the arena instead, which definitely makes the Panopticon section easier as well. Essentially, time would never be a problem for me in this run. All I had to do was get past Sisyphus and then I could play it safe for as long as I needed to ensure that I didn't die. Because let me tell you, Sisyphus is by far the hardest boss to beat with only coin punches because of how big and how diverse his attacks are. So shit's rough if you get past him and then proceed to die to a fucking stray. But anyway, cheers to this one final run. And to the end of this monstrous challenge. And I only did it in four and a half minutes. Can you guys believe it? Holy shit. Ooh. Wait, wait. Before you go, there's actually one last thing that we have to do. <laughs> fix the water supply. Okay. Okay, guys. I will do the I will fix the water supply. Fear not. The the water supply shall return shortly. I'm fi- yeah, I'm booting up Minecraft. I'm fixing the water supply in the village. And like, so, uh, god damn, I'm red. Press enter to enable the narrator. I don't- I, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. I got this, guys. Don't worry. Move the face cam so we can see the chat. Oh, true. This, this is my house right here. Unless, wait, what the fuck? There's no door. Oh, there's a chest in here. Ew! 
lots of food. No, I need a bucket. Hey, kitty. I already forgot I had a cat. Is this water fresh? No, about this water. No, I think out here is good. Let's go out a little bit. Yeah, okay, this water is good. How do you tell the difference between fresh and not fresh water? I just know. It's that simple. Hi. Okay. Okay, the fresh water has been it's been purified. This is the water. The water has been restored. Alright, alright. Now we've actually completed everything. Thanks so much to everyone who sat with me during these long ass streams, you guys made it a whole lot more fun. If you want to be a part of our stream shenanigans like restoring the water to the village, you should consider subscribing so you can get notified when I go live. Or you could just join my discord because I send livestream announcements there too. But holy shit, you guys are insane. A huge thank you to everyone for the overwhelming amount of support I got on my ARM video. It's, it's absolutely wild to me that a video I made has attracted that many eyes. Like, it's seriously incredible. I always enjoy reading the comments people leave because some of them are just funny and others are just really sweet. Hopefully this video and many more to come live up to the standard I set with ARM. Putting every ounce of effort I had into this video is my way of saying thanks, again. But I enjoy making it because I know it might make someone smile. I've also created a Patreon page for those of you who want to go above and beyond with supporting me. Patrons will get stuff like earlier access to videos, more sneak peeks, easier communication with myself, and even have their likeness and or names edited into my video somewhere as an easter egg. I don't want to do one of those boring end screens where I just show everyone's pictures or something while their names scroll by. Nah. Instead, each patron will get a special little meme or clip dedicated to them in every single video that they supported me through. But that's enough plugging. Thank you all again for watching this video. I know it's probably hard to watch longer ones like this because an hour is a lot of time, but let me know if you're going to try this yourself and if you enjoyed my own experience. Be on the lookout for my next video too, it's going to be a good one. In the meantime, you can watch any of the ones on screen. And as we say on stream, Adidas. <laughs>